hostile detected. Weapons hot. Activating sonar. Enemy spotted! Welcome everyone to the X Defiant All-Star Series Grand Finals. I'm your host Katie Bedford, joined by my amazing co-casters. I hold shift and Uber shouts for an incredible day of the best of seven gameplay. It's gonna be high octane, high action, high fun. And that's what it's all about. X Defiant, if you're unfamiliar, maybe you missed the first portion of the All-Star Series. Well, it is an FPS arena shooter. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the format. Right, you can see it there on your screen. It's going to be those four teams that were whittled down to just two. Team TP and Team Aches are going to go head to head in a best of seven after battling through matches against Team Pac-Man and Team Karma, respectively, to get to this point. We saw a sweep. We saw a game go all the way to map five. So we've seen everything we can get. And that means I have a feeling the best of seven is going to be excellent. And the prizing, that's what it's all about. Winner takes all 10,000. Dollars, you get nothing for second place. Uh, you get a participation ribbon, but that is about it. Winner takes home ten thousand. Not to mention an incredibly cool uh, trophy. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at that recap shift because uh, that first matchup was uh, going to be Team Pac-Man, Team Aches, and it was Aches with the sweep. Yeah, it was a little bit of a revenge story, right? I mean, we did our initial showcase in Vegas way before this, and Team Aches was able to extend it to a best of seven and win. But here, no real contest. Team Aches looked fluid from start to finish. All three maps came through in relatively dominant fashion, and they had set the tone, I think, right from the get-go with that being our opening matchup. The review says it all. I mean, none of these maps were tremendously close. Yeah, look, I think this Team Aix roster is kind of perfectly balanced. You have insane SMG players. You have fantastic riflers as well. Team Pac-Man really struggled to get it together. I think on Escort out of the gates, they were too slow to start yeah. the, the, the series, and I think... It was taken away from them before they had a chance to really find their feet. Team Aix were ferocious, didn't give them a chance to get ready. Yeah, Team Aix, yes, you have a sweep, and Team TP will be joining them, but theirs not quite as clean, Uber, right? It went all the way back and forth, back and forth, until finally they got the victory over Team Generally, Kama. a really compelling series. Uh, this was fantastic to watch from start to finish. Noodleplex for me was, uh, you know, like, we're seeing Team TP go at it and see the lead they were able to amass on this map, their understanding of the rotations. It was very, very clean. Oddly enough, at one time or another, both, like, either of these teams looked like they were really well drilled. We were kind of a little bit hard, I think, on Team TP for maybe looking less cohesive as a team, but on the individual level, and then eventually on the team level as well, they were the better roster. Those last three maps, I think, really turned the tide from what we started off with, which was essentially Team TP dominating in the opening escort, but everything else past that was pretty much close from start to finish. Yep. Big difference maker in that domination, like you mentioned on Noodle. I thought they really started to find themselves in that point. And even though the zone control lists as a 2-0, it was still really, really close from start to finish. So those last three maps were, I think, really, really successful for Team TP, getting their hands on the game a little bit longer, getting familiar with one another, and of course, getting ready for this grand finals yeah sometimes those stat lines can be deceiving to how close yeah. the map actually was but here's how it played out in our bracket karma and pac-man simply not able to get it done but i'm so thrilled about this final with team aches and team tp shift because well not only were they 
longest running teammates in their prior <laughs> days as pros. There's so much history there, but the teams again, just high octane, high capacity for greatness. Yeah, and this is essentially now a new challenger that's mm -hmm. been brought to the stage. You know, we talked about the fact that Team Pac-Man and Eggs had matched up against each other before, but now we kind of have a chance to see some new faces have a chance to fight for that $10,000, even though for the players on the stage, those faces aren't new at all. Like you mentioned, they are long standing. At least those yeah. two captains is playing with each other. You also heard kind of in the late stages mm -hmm. of that first day talking about crim six also right. having a lot of familiarity as well so I mean these are no strangers to one another should be a nice little stroll in the park let's take a look at our team captains we've already mentioned them a few times tp and aches a, a lot of history there not only with each other but in the fps realm you can see it in the stats laid out here and i think when you look at those championships you know uber that on either side both of these teams they have the capacity to be the best in the game Absolutely. I mean, Aix has a really long-standing career. He kept at it for quite a while when people thought he was down, when people thought he was out. He would always come back. And the beauty about him as a player in FPS is that he was fueled by being the underdog or going up against, a, you know, Optic Gaming, great example. Whenever he was up against that, that team, he would always go the extra mile. He and Teep know each other really well. There's actually, like, the trash talk from them. I don't know how much we're going to get it because they know each other very well. There's a really <laughs> strong respect between the two of them, but they know that both of them are legitimate competitors here. We have the two best teams, I think, from our starting four going head-to-head -head in the finals. Look, I, I think if anyone's going to start shouting, it might be on Team Aches. Let's look at that entire roster because TP, I think a little too quiet and composed for that, but Pentagram, Crim6, and Slack should... I think we could see a little something from it. Uh, Krim's got no shortage of personality. <laughs> I think those that have followed his <laughs> career will know that without question. But interestingly enough, in the first day of action, it was Pentagram who mm -hmm. really stole the show. I mean, he's coming up as someone who does not have the same kind of reputability as the other players on stage, but that does not take away from his individual skill. He was an outstanding player in that first set of matches. Yeah, Krim uh, was informing, uh, I think, attached at some point, he was gonna knock him down to the X Defiant Challengers League, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to be, but some strong words being spoken there. Plenty of chirping, of course. Uh, and look, I think like we talked about it the first time we saw this team ace, mm -hmm. slacked is really good at extra fight. He yeah, picked up yeah. this game. Yes, he, he is a, he is dirty on the SMG player for me to watch for sure. A player to watch, but let's not forget the other side of this team, TP Uber attach John and Spacely joining Teep, and we already saw, especially from John, and Teep had our only 50 bomb in the first portion yep. of this tournament, but John was on fire too. Yeah, I was like a little critical of TP, I think, at the start of that series against Team Karma, and he completely silenced me, as he silenced many people over the years in that later part of that series. John and Spacely, players to watch, very, very relentless uh, sub uh, machine gun players. Spacely always seems to be there, He's always ratting, he's always in a, a great position, very, very hard to get rid of here. This team looked really sick, uh, and they had to stay out last a, a strong Team Karma as well to get the win in their match. So they've had maximum game time coming into this grand final. I think, though, we did see a level of adaptability and learning across that five-game mm -hmm. series, though, for Team TP. It just comes down to the end-all, be-all. Did they get enough experience together to be able to match up with a guy who works on the game and right. three other players that had, well, I guess at least two <laughs> other players that had seen Vegas from before. So the experience on the other side of the stage is mm -hmm. significant, especially especially for this title. When I think at the end of it too, yes, maybe it wasn't as clean as the sweep we saw from Team X, but you got more practice. Oh, yeah. You have that fortitude, that resilience. Uh, they faced more resistance than exactly. Team Agreed. 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 By the way, yeah. So Team we'll have to see what happens, I think, in the grand final, which is just around the corner. So don't go anywhere. When we get back from this very short break, it's map one of the grand finals. Welcome back to the grand finals of the X Defiant All-Stars series. We have Team X and Team TP just moments away from going at it in a best of seven. I'm your host, Katie Bedford, joined again by Shift and Uber. And 
so excited that we're finally here, Chip, that we get to see these teams face off. Oh, and just the setup to get here, too. I mean, come on. It's hard to not be a fan of what's going on right now with X Defiant. The All-Star Series, I think, has been an absolute hit. And these two teams, like Uber was mentioned before the break, they are looking like the best that we're here. So it's exciting to see these guys get a chance to match up against one another and test it all out. Anything less than all seven maps would have to be <laughs> close to tears. Because the build-up has been so present for this game. And both teams also are looking extremely well drilled. I loved how TP was saying, we are picking up this game as we go. We are assimilating this information. We get arena domination for <laughs> game oh, one. My. That is hype. Arena domination shift? That, that <laughs> oh, arena oh, is already an incredibly small map. But the amount of sight lines alongside the elevation, this is, uh, we thought that Showtime at the last event was chaotic, but this is gonna be madness. Gloves are off, baby. We're just going <laughs> straight into the action. I can't wait to see the MP7s just start flying around. And I think the thing about it is, I don't know if there's gonna be like a favored side of the map because it's a symmetrical map. You've got a full circle around an elevated platform where the B flag exists. And yeah, I'm ready to see the subs running and gunning. Yeah, so a couple of things about this. Grenades going to be really important. Also, Intel suit is something that Echelon uh, faction players can pick up. That's very powerful for knowing who's going to be in your vicinity. It is all chaos to start off the grand final here at the X Defiant All-Star Series. Map one is arena domination. It is going to be hectic, to say the least. Uber, Shift, take us away. Thank you very much, Katie. Yeah, I think you've uh, put a bowl in this quite nicely. Arena is a pretty close quarters map. We might see teams off to pick up more SMG players here. I'm very curious, Shift, to see what kind of factions, what kind of deployables we go for. I think cleaners are going to be very powerful here. Oh, yeah, they will be. And this is the other thing we talked about for a moment, just kind of comparing the two teams. We're going to see TP continue to run the cleaners as an AR. We're on the other side. Expect to see it with Pentagram on the sub. So it's going to be a little bit of a difference of play style, but the damage is already coming through. Wow. Crim6 gets the first three kills, though. He's already on for the B flag. That's pretty scary stuff. Finding those three wow. kills there at range. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to be on the wrong side of Crim6 when he gets fired up. Attach having to rotate full speed. He doesn't want to go for the cap here because he knows, I mean, this point is so hard to capture, but conversely, oh. it's so hard to take back as well. Once you get it under your control, that can give you a big lead. Nice moment there from TP using that firearm to stop the little mantle over the top. Still, no one actually possesses this B zone, so it's just the one second for one second progression coming out from the home flags at the moment. This B flag is going to be so hard to not only just capture, but how do you hold it? Yeah, exactly. That's the tough part here. Uh, you want to obviously, you know, bait people to try and come up for the retake, have players playing from these longer sightlines. That's where your ARs actually really start to fire up. When you're defending this point from, uh, you know, an off angle, it's pretty frightening to see. So whoever's able to cap B first has a distinct advantage. Yeah, and still, that hasn't Ooh. happened until just right now. It will be Team Teep to get on there first and foremost. So now every second will count as two points for Team TP, and the pressure is on for teammates to try to neutralize, if not maybe flip the flag altogether. Crimson wants to make his way directly towards the point. Slack is going to be there, but John finds both of them. What a turnaround. This is going to allow Team TP oh. to recapture, reestablish control and start to tick up even further. Oh, that is just an unbelievable last gunfight as well. John at long range with the MP7 gets the work done. So now all of a sudden things become very scary. A small moment of pressure over towards the C zone, but now on the bounce back, Crim6 to the pistol. Ah, oh, the stim boost below though. The Bio Vita going to allow the left. Uh, the, the the, yep, yeah, they do get the cap. Not fully going to be claimed though, as there will be a moment of brief contest. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be ripped away from them very quickly. These score lines are going to remain pretty close. Very, very difficult to hold on to that center point for any sort of long period of time. Spacey here, trying to work that low level. Pentagram gets the better of him though. Two kills coming out for the player on the cleaner class. Make it three. TP has to try and chime back in himself, but there's an opening here for Team X. Back and forth, back and forth. Neutral goes B, chance for a recontest. And actually, Team X had a moment where they were threatening the A zone for a moment here. So now you've got to try to really get the pressure back up. Your Team TP, full focus coming up, full Team wipe also in the mix, plus a little extra. This could lead to a moment of contest over towards C. Yeah, this is scary for Team X. This is not what you want to allow Team TP to do. Get a clean break on B. Have a full team wipe, even just 10 or so seconds on B can make go. a huge difference. And John says, you know what, I'm coming for C. Now you've got to worry about me on your home base. Are you going to try and contest B or are you going to let us continue to get out in front? 
Krimzik just walks in, gets the shot. The scattergun didn't quite land. The timing was imperfect. So now all of a sudden, everything's kind of turned backwards. TP only gets one with the Purifier, and that will lead to a moment where Aix's squad is going to have a chance to reclaim their home flight and take B in the same breath. Medico Supreme will also in play. Everyone nice and healthy at over 200 HP. Yeah, you saw just how hard that was for attached to approach. Both of his opponents had 200 points of health. He wasn't getting either of those there. So that's like going to try and ease into this just a little bit more. Controlling B is important. And that, that gap is starting to get chewed right up. Back and forth, back and forth. I mean, 10 points, are you kidding me? They couldn't get any closer to this, but hold on a second. Deep's losing their home base. So Aix is trying to move the way through with the goggles. That will try to get them back into position to hold on to C. But now all of a sudden, you're a little bit lacking position to hope over towards the B zone. Goggles will fade. Aix tries to dash on in. Matic goes to on the other side, but they burn through it. Spacely drops. Yeah, it's a whole clip from the MP7 to eat through that ultra, but that's huge that Aix is able to take down the player Pop a Medical Supremo in a one-to-one. -one. That is ridiculous stuff, and he's far from done here. He's looking right at home. He's putting his feet up on the couch, Charlie Murphy. He's chilling. Yeah, but there will still be a moment with the shutdown to come out where he has basically right back on towards the zone. Neutralizes the B zone, a chance for full reclamation of it as well. And yeah, the kills will allow them the chance to stack. One more contest in the mix. This allows Slacked off spawn to try to get some utility over, but they've already lost the zone, and now it's on to Slack to try to break. Might be a photo finish here. Shift at this rate. Only two points separate these rosters, and now we have a flip on towards B. Spicely trying Man. to contest, but Pentagram gets the better of him. That's his second in a row. TP and squad trying to reclaim. Look like it's heading in their favor now. He's able to win the high ground. Nate out towards the spawn. Pentagram needs to move. TP brings him down. Yeah, both teams have been so efficient over the top of the middle of the map when it comes to how they're using the Ultras. It has been just as tight as we would have expected from a grand finals. We're going to finish off this Ten. first half, and Team TP are going to have a position of small power with the last two flags. Not quite able to get over towards the C zone, but the first half ultimately successful for Team TP. The first half wrapped up, and all these players having a great time. Players in general, they're loving X Defiant because it feels like a throwback to classic games. So let's hear what Attach had to say about what he thinks sets X, Defi X Defiant apart from other FPS titles. X Defiant feels like a breath of fresh air. It can easily change the landscape of the FPS scene just because the different factions, there's so many different ones, the maps, the dev team is really on point, and uh, I like all the changes and adjustments they need to make to weapons, whether they need to make them stronger, they need to make them weaker, and I feel like them listening to the community is gonna help it go really far. Strap yourself in for another five minutes of madness. Team TP get a good start, though, and actually able to open themselves up a little bit of breathing room here at the beginning of the round. I mean, it's just the same thing. Rinse, wash, repeat as we had on the break off from our first half. It's just so darn Ooh, hard to gain advantage, to gain over towards B. But Pentagram's three does turn the tide just a touch. Halfway onto the capture. Still not enough to earn the extra point yet, but that follow-up will allow them to capture it and now start to set them up for hopefully a hold. Pentagram showed us this in our first best of five against Team Pac-Man. He was such a problem on that MP7, on that SMG class. And now Team TP need to find a way to approach this midpoint without getting mowed down. They're going to send two straight up the guts here. Slack though has the off yeah. angle playing from wide. Able to get some pressure down on TP here, but the burn gives him the trade from the grave. That's the danger, though, of trying to just to flood up and mantle onto the high ground. Those outside lanes with an AR are just so hard to contest when you're sitting out in the open trying to capture a zone. Now, the second attempt, much more successful, and a lot of that did come to clarity on the outsides, and you can see it kind of on the top left, TP's position, really well formed. He's able to assist with attached to clean things up, and it will be a two-zone hold for Team TP as they have a chance to reclaim a very significant lead. Yeah, they just snuck out in front, just there at the switchover. Still three minutes, 20 seconds on the clock, so plenty to work with here, but Team TP now starting to stretch their legs a little bit more. Spacely wants to make it so no one from Team Ace can group up in wow. multiples and approach the point from that low ground, sort of mantling up there. That seems to have been a powerful strategy so far. It looks like that point is under pressure once more. Nah, but it's still, again, cleared. John attached, finding two kills. That is essentially confirms the full team wipe, but that a hell of a gunfight from Spacely. That is not an easy set of shots versus Crim6, having a little bit of a different time locking down Slack, but still the kill comes out and everything stays status normal here with Team TP in a pretty good position of power. Aix trying to change it. He's going to have a chance for a contest. Yeah, the two for one from Spacely there using the Bio Vita boost. Critical. Just being able to keep things even. We're in a 4v4 right now, so getting a two for one trade for yourself is absolutely massive. Team TP now, they are straight chilling. It's up to Aix 
Phoenix and Co to come up with an answer. Two minutes 30 to go, yes, but it's almost a 60 point deficit here. Yeah. It's going to take a while to make up. Our ultras are starting to come online here for both sides as well. So we saw that being a big difference maker late in the first half. What happens here? Who wants to be the first ones to hit the triggers? May not even need it. First three kills are clean. Not going to get the fourth though. Spacely confirms the trade. Everything stays relatively normal and we're still waiting to see what teammates can put together to really influence this B zone. Oh, you've got to win those slack. He's trying to approach the middle part of the map. It doesn't pay off for him here. Whoa. Eggs finds a crucial kill on towards TP. Can he do more than this though? Crimson gets dropped on by Space. He plays a little bit more aggressive off the point, but behind him there is a cap underway. He can't turn around and respond. Slack is going to be able to find him here. That was the Medico Supremo also popped by Spacely for what it's worth. He just kind of falls off the high ground. So now you have a bubble to try to reinforce. Goggles in return. Just looking to try to pick things up. His Aix is going to come right from behind the bubble. Shoots down one with one shot, then finishes off the other. No way. Oh, a little Mexican standoff just outside the bubble, but John pushes in, finds the kill, and the shutdown is good. The Aegis is a real problem for those sonar goggles. You have to commit, you have to go in, and with just a 5-7, it can be very hard to secure Supremo. that kill. Medico Supremo for Slacked here, pops that one, attached, can't quite hide behind that little bit of cover as much as he would have liked to here. Teammates are back in control by <laughs> Team Slacked, and look at this. Lost the effects of that ultra, but now they need to hold on. The shutdown was still pretty darn good, though. Slack able to essentially 1v3 the zone. Attach actually maybe going to work over towards A. He's got goggles out. Hold on a second. This is a bold play, but it may work out. He's got a read on everyone coming off spawn, but he can only get a single kill. Not even enough to neutralize the A They've got B, though. That's the most important part here. Oh, T makes takes him uh, quite a while to get in position again. Oh, my goodness. Diving Valiant. straight into the Aegis is a bold play. Works a little bit better when you have a purifier up, but hey, still looked good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just committing yourself to the play, right? Trying to get the shutdown individually, try to catch it by surprise. 35. Yep, 35 seconds left mathematically now. You have to get two zones if your team aches, and you may actually start to need a, an actual neutralization yeah. on the other. This is a tall ask here for team aches. Yeah, I think this is going to be a little bit outside of their capacity here. Crimsix, though, understands the job that needs to be done. Over towards C, he goes here. We'll have a flip of, of A and C. Yeah, that's just exactly how you play that if you're Team TP. You lose your home flag, you take the, your opponents. Not to be mathematically possible. And man, that second half, clean, efficient, near perfect for Team TP after a scrappy first. And yeah, they will finish this map off with a full triple capture, really to add insult to injury. Oh my goodness. Team X, they have yet to lose a map until we got to team TP and they looked consistently strong. Uber, the way that Teep's team was consistently locking down that B point, it felt like no matter what Team X was throwing at them, they just couldn't get a foothold. Yeah, look, I think a lot of it had to do uh, with, with Spacely and John. They were such a problem, constantly trading up their frag, always so so frequently able to get these sort of, uh, you know, two for ones that you really want in like a 4v4 game mode. Look, it's Look, this game type is is very fast paced. It's very chaotic mm -hmm. here. It can be really hard to pick apart the nuance, but ultimately it's about getting value, right? Getting value from those ultras. Can you turn an ultra into a full team wipe, yep. into a cap? Yep. Can you have people streaming in to help you? It's really about efficiency there. And I think that Team TP understood that really well after their last series and they've executed and employed that here really well. And another instance where we look back at the domination, and we talked about it when they played last time on Noodle, where a lot of the outside of the map kept going the way of Team TP. Mm -hmm. That was the case once again here, because it wasn't just how quickly they were able to capture over towards B, but it felt like any single time that teammates were trying to re-aggress, it was all mantling up mid, and the ARs on the outside were just teeing off. Yep. Well, and something that I know too, that I had talked to Ace about, heard him mention was that uh, John and Spacely in particular, they had played a lot of the closed beta. <laughs> so while some of these players, we weren't quite sure how comfortable they were gonna be. It shows. It shows yep. exactly that they are comfortable, they know what they're doing and they're having a good time. Let's take a look at those stats and my goodness, attached just two off of our first potential 40 bomb there of the grand final, but take a look at the damage as well. Across the board doing a great job, but note who had the most damage, Uber, almost 6K out of Pentagram for the loss. Yeah, and that's uh, gonna be a tough pill to swallow there. Honestly, pretty clean ratio, 34 and 26 here. So getting very involved, six captures as well, like really hitting that point hard. But John on the other side has no fear, zero fear. 
nine captures here on the point. Yep. And only 22 deaths as well. But a scoreline that clean, there's just no world in which you're losing uh, that map. Very nice showing from Team TP. And on the other side, Slack, we kind of saw him in the opening showcase in right. Vegas running a lot of M16. He's been running a lot more SMG over the course of the first day of action. And here again in the Grand Finals, he was not able to do what John was doing on the other side. So that was a big difference maker, I think, in just how the SMGs were playing. Yeah, well, you talk about an SMG map, and it's not going to get better <laughs> than Arena. That yep. is an MP7 playground. But now we're moving on to Escort on Meltdown. Meltdown, a map I've played a lot. I really enjoy it, but we haven't seen it so far yep. yet in the All-Star Series. That's where we're going to be heading next. And uh, it, it's interesting, I think, it, especially if you're on offense, that first little bit, that first point you need to get to can really be tough because uh, Uber, there's so much defensive high ground. Uh, exactly. Uh it is pretty predictable. Mm -hmm. You kind of, you can have a couple players watch those uh, points of ingress that the defenders tend to take up. And we talked about this in our initial showcase. Uh, there is a cheeky little spot by the crane that attackers yes. can use to really shut down the defense. Uh, it, you, you can only really be seen from like the, head, the mm -hmm. sort of the top of the head down to the, the sort of chin there. It's not easy to pick you off from that spot. But I think players have wised up. They kind of know uh, how powerful that spot is. So expect to see people play around it. And on the other side, talking about that particular position, getting there is not necessarily easy for the attack. But I will say, playing on Escort on this map comparatively to zone control, you have to have it. Because otherwise, you're just stuck in the middle of an open pathway where the defense can really feast on you. So that's, I think, the big battle, that battle for Crane. Teammates very well may have a meltdown if they can't get on the board with this map. Down 0-1 after an extremely strong start out of Team TP there on Arena. Uber shift. Let's find out how this plays out. I'm a bit of up my pun game. I feel like I'm getting out <laughs> done a little bit at this uh, at this point already. Man, it's map two. All right, breaking out the big guns, Katie. I like it. That's right. We're off to meltdown. I personally, huge fan of this map. Right, we're going to be coming out of here of the attacker spawn. There's going to be a gantry way with some high ground for defenders if they choose to mm. play up that close and some long sight lines as well. Yeah, that's a big key. I also just want to remind the viewership here, when we were watching the qualifier opening matches, Team Aches got the 100% really quickly on their first push. And at the same time, when they swapped, they only held Team Pac-Man to 18% yeah. worth of capture. So this is a huge starting point. I would say more for Team TP to try to slow down this offensive play from Team Aix. You don't have too many barriers, Team TP, because Crim6 is looking to bust them wide open. EMP deployed. Mag barrier for the attack is down. It gives them a stage ground to start to try to punch. <laughs> oh my goodness. That one gets swept aside awful quick. Yeah, you can see what the idea here for Team Aix is. Four-man stack towards the right side out the gate, trying to get this right Triple side P. position. But yeah, it's being met at the same right. You think these guys know what the power positions look like here, Hoover? Everyone's fighting for the same side of the map. Aix opting for a different approach here. They're trying to take the fight to the high ground here, but so John tough. Attach has the off angle. Playing from the garage on that right-hand side, that's a tough hole to break. Slack is going deep to try and get behind. And you right. have to. You absolutely have to. John's position is one that is so indomitable. It's so difficult to fight up towards that top catwalk position. So try to work into a spot where you're going to come back completely concealed. And how hey. about it? The flank is what? in. Turn is trying to come through. BioVita could be used to keep Slack safe. There it is. The follow-up, though. Oh, boy. They just completely overwhelm. Aix only gets a two-piece, though. So the defense will still stand strong. Yeah, it, it may have Open it up for eight there, but John has still been very, very hard to shift on the top of this gantry way. Go. Eventually, though, Pentagram pushes up into him. You'll note a lot of ARs. This is a long sightlight part of the map. All these here trying to make sure they can win these long range gunfights. Well, the thing is, package is on the move note, so they have broken down this defense just a touch. Still a chance for the ability of the defense to start making their way forward, but Slack denies any further play from TP. Defense still comes on top of the trades with Attach getting a three piece. Krim trying to fight back, but once again deterred from the high ground. And once more, the defense gets set up in these real nasty spots. Nice spot here for Attach just past the Slag heap. These are very long sidelines looking in towards the spawn. The Gantry Way is a pretty powerful position, but. I don't know if Team Aix no attaches here. No, they don't. Slack's going to get a rude awakening, though. Crimzik's at least able to trade that, though. He wants to get moving, but Spacely, very common defensive position there. He doesn't spot the player at Crane. Yep, that's the spot we were talking about. I think it's Aix who's already holding it down, so the package could continue to move. 
as long as that position is held. It's so hard defensively to get across this pathway and help Spacely out. I mean, you can kind of see it in the minimap. All the rest of the defenders are completely pinned up towards this high ground spot, and it's just a feeding frenzy at the moment. Package making its way for the first segment to come through. Team the only player really able to find anything there. Just so good. sheer strength of numbers on the ground there for teammates. They have a good idea where the defender is going to come from. Eventually, when you get close enough, there's only three different places. Like so yeah. You sort of... Uh, narrow it down a little bit, and hey, four minutes 50 to work with for the next checkpoint. Hey, ultimately, I think that's W when it comes down to the offense. It looked like for a moment they were just going to get spawn trapped over and over and over again, but it's just a hard labor of love to back out the defense from those key positions. And even still, off of the proximal respawns, the defenders are actually getting some more ground to work with. Lots of exits kind of keeping the offense at bay. Now let's talk about the foundry a little bit more here, because along that top left-hand side, you have a flanking route, right? Yep. But when you go up there, you don't really have the ability to look out any windows. There's like one window along the way. Yep. So it's not really uh, a very powerful high ground position for attackers to take, but it's one you take if you want to wrap around. And especially as this package takes this next turn, if you can get up into this top window position that's a little bit right in front of where Crimsix is, you can actually keep the defenders once again stuck kind of back into their spawn. So it's a three-man stack on the package. It is sprinting into this next control Ooh, point, and this is going to be tough troublesome here for the defense who need to find a way to come through because the ultras are getting close to being online. Crim 6 Aegis, that will be the one. That is going to be very scary if Team TP see that one coming. Oh, I like this. Okay. Aegis on the dead sec here. Ultra available. Looking to switch off any of those deployables that Team TP have to play inside. He just needs to stay alive because you have to assume the defense with so much time still on the clock are going to feel frisky enough to start popping those ultras out. But here's that top control room position we were talking about. Once again, it's Aches holding down a key piece of land that could allow this offense to continue to move the package. And so far, I mean, the defense is having such a tough time getting out of the spawn for free. Aches, though, a lot of damage. No kills from this position. Grenade just steps outside of its radius. Aches has done this a couple times before. Pentagram on the ground, though, getting a good amount of work done with that. Package hasn't moved for a while. About to start rolling back. Yeah. And this retreat portion could be huge, but Slack Aches still continue to find kills, and no one can come out of spawn. I mean, this high ground spot is so good for the defenders, but Aches keeps denying them any sort of route towards getting any sort of viewpoint. Now to the pistol beatdown combo as he ran out of ammunition, but Crim6 is going to get three, and that should be enough to finish off the second checkpoint. Yeah, you think that'll get him there, surely? Slack on his way in. Basically, wow. And some other ideas, though. I'm going to push him back. Two for him. Attach, of course, with the sonar goggles. Big plays here. Teammates a little bit unsure of themselves now. And I, I want to say Aches used the lockout, and I didn't see any other ultras that were being used defensively. You kind of saw the disruption happening on the utility board, but the defense, I don't think they were using any of their key ultras at that particular moment. So once more, the package starts to retreat. The defenders start to find oh. the kills they need, and it's going to be a four-for-one exchange defense now moving forward. It's Spacely and John again rocking that right-hand side of the map. It is so hard. Those two are relentless. Team Aches struggling for an answer here. Yeah. And yeah, Carlos be backing up. Yeah, this is not good news here for the offense. They've lost their positions up top. They aren't really quite able to work over towards that smelting side. And honestly speaking, for a part of the map that you're starting to see a lot of ARs come into play, it's the SMGs again to the defenders that are starting to take over the map. TP, Aegis, yep, look a little crispy. Tried to make his way forward. TP really out of control of space, pretty effective. Oh, no! They walk straight into that one. Mag Barrier be damned. TP does not care. The defenders are getting comfy. Yeah, this is looking really good for TP's defense. I mean, we were kind of just cycling through the offensive side. I don't know if any of the attackers even have anything close in terms of ultras. Not the greatest day from John, but he'll be all right. He's also close to what, what? could be the definitive moment of this defense. He's really close to his second Aegis. One minute left here. The team aims to get that checkpoint and that extension. But Spacely keeps catching them off this morning. Crimsix takes one to the knee. Spacely is a menace right now, but the bot's getting ever closer. Spacely knows he needs to double back right now. His target on the other side of the boxes looks like TP was able to stem the bleed there. Yeah, that was a pentagram on the purifier. So once again, another tool off the table. John, ready to go with Aegis if he needs it. He's just going to hold right over the top of the package. And as soon as this gets down to about it's 20 time. seconds, yep, it's about time to pull this. You're going to have to commit on in. 
blocking damage, allowing his team the chance to move forward. Pure oh. fire. Oh, it's a firebomb on the other side. The firebomb will actually get the elimination. So how about that interaction? He walks into the explosion. That's good for the kill, but Spacely, little pinch, trying to stop, but can he actually stop this second no. checkpoint? No, extra time on the clock. That incendiary drone was clutch against the Aegis. John may be unaware, not sure, but he's just sort of hung around inside that flame trail and got burned for it. Team TP almost had it in the bag right there, and then Eggs get an extension. Now, is it a lifeline? Or is it a stay in execution? Let's see if they can get the map done with this allowment. I mean, it's just one of those things with how hard pressed Carlos was to get to that second checkpoint. Even having a little extra time to get it closer to things like 80% capture may be enough. Thing is, as we start to stretch in towards this final portion, Getting around this corner is the first test. The second is getting it through the threshold. Goggles out for the defense. Huh? First shot's not particularly great from Attach. Missing out on a chance for kills, and he will get one, but not a second. Good shutdown from Team Aches. Slack with two there. Shutting down. Now playing with Ultra and his teammate. Make it three. This is getting a little bit scary uh -oh. for Team TP. Yeah, that's a big old bubble right in their way. Attach able to find Slack that leaves back off the spawn. But Carlos is encroaching. Oh dear, it's so scary. The Aegis Crimsix descends. It looks like teammates have found themselves a bit of momentum now. That Ultra has expired, but they're 95% of the way. They're trying to look for their foes here. Pentagram found attached. Crimsix not sure where the shots are coming from. It's going to be Spicy on the right hand side. Able to bring him down. 99.2, so close. Not close enough. Still a ton of time in the clock. Getting close to a second lockout here for Aches. That could be big if there was to be a final push and an Ultra on the other side to try to deny it. He's still a long way out, though, I'll say that much. Bio Vita Boost trying to get Pop Slack, trying to save his teammate, but doesn't quite work out. So now he's on his lonesome, and, well, they actually, they, they C9 it. Wait a second. They get it from behind. They lost track of the payload, and they push it through. Oh, goodness. The name of Charles the Ninth getting invoked as well. Unreal. <laughs> Goodness gracious, what an ending we just saw. And while he wasn't able to join us today, we did actually get a chance to sit down with Enable to talk about what he thinks of slick and simple gameplay, some of which we just witnessed, and what he's experienced in X-Defiant so far. The mechanic in the game that impressed me the most would have to be just the overall movement, but to get more specific, it would be the tap strafing. So you can basically, while you're sprinting, you can slide and in midair, you can readjust your player, just barely. Um, it's not anything too crazy, but you can use it to engage in gunfights around corners, uh, which makes it just a lot harder for you to be hit. It's all positioning. You can add some mechanical movement um, and it really adds a skill gap. Yeah, good to hear from Enable there and some of his experience with the game. Shame he obviously couldn't have made it to this best of seven, but uh, we have no shortage of superstars in the lobby right now. Slack dumping for a long sight line here. Mag Barry deployed by the attackers. Yeah, and Incendiary Drone actually defensively thrown out just to make sure that, again, this stack up through the alleyway is not going to be a point of contest. But the attack is... Coming through, I think, from the other side of the map at the moment. Slack's trying to reposition. He's in trouble here. Biovita keeps him from burning alive, and then he takes the gunfight, shutting down Teep on the other side. That's a big kill there, John, though. No, able to get back in, and we're on the road here with the bot. This squad, man, absolutely terrifying Team TP when they get rolling. Team Axe, look, credit to them. Got the map done. Not a lot of time to work with, though. Took him hot minute to get there. The thing is, Team Teeps, they're already in a good spot. Yep. You got Spacely over the top of Crane, but I think they got a teammate up top in the warehouse window as well. So the defense is going to get pressured on both sides. I don't know how you chow this right now, Uber. I mean, they are completely stuck trying to get across this open area. Spacely will be ducked down behind, oh. but Teepy's going to get the double, and this is quick progress for the first checkpoint. Yeah, this is what we were kind of afraid of. I think seeing Team Teepy on defense, their advantage, their strength is definitely translated now on the offensive side. Wow. Crimsix gets to two huge kills, but it's not enough to stop the bot for now. Spacing trying to use Carlos for cover. The Pentagram swoops on in. John off the respawn, those able to find the kill, needs to try and play around. There's Magbar and he gets the better of eggs. Oh, he's going to be fuming about that. Make it three. And John, surely not, is going to get the bot to their first checkpoint as Crimsix in the nick of time stops him in his tracks. I, I mean, come on, dude. 1v3 with an MP7 on the Phantom class and he wins it all? Plus he captures the checkpoint? That is unbelievable. So much time now banked on the clock as Team TP really don't struggle, stutter, or find any obstacles whatsoever to that first segment of the map.
Here it is. TP on escort duty for the time being. Yeah, that was cute. Ake's there, really hard to dig out of position. Ake's able to get away with that extra kill on John. That's all it's going to be for now. Two players on the package. Gets a little bit faster with extra bodies to push it. I, that's still a three for two exchange. The offense is still moving, Carlos, no worries. Nades are out, Ake's going to take a challenge, but this feels very individualistic right now from Team Ake's defense. Trying to just force themselves into gunfights, and now you've got a three-man stack. Still five minutes on the clock, and they're going to start to threaten the second checkpoint. Love the wrap there, though, Ian Porter. Beautiful stuff. And finally, uh, Team TPR slowed down for the time being. Gives Ake's and Co. Chance to set up some of this defensive architecture there. Incendiary drone gives space a little bit of a tickle. He has to use that bio vita boost uh, to avoid getting burnt to a crisp. But they still survive through it. A chance to threaten the high ground. You can see the alertness talking about that right side smelting side. Package still moving. Spacely following up. Trade not fully in. Contest is out. And well, he just gets completely baited into Pentagram's waiting arms, who does take down three. Slack confirms his fourth. And that will be another team wipe coming out for the defenders. All right. This is now team makes his time to put a gap between themselves and Team TP. Spacely, though, doesn't want to let them rest on their laurels. TP as well, chiming in, pushing up this right-hand side here. I think Spacely realized after dropping into three players on the left that they perhaps should approach on the other side of the map here. That's a mag barrier coming up. TP trying to break that one down. I think Pentagram playing that off angle on the left-hand side has been very hard to deal with. Yeah, those little cubbies are just so hard to win out, especially in the face of Pentagram with an MP7 and the incendiary rounds. It's just deadly. I mean, you feel like you're in a blender sometimes and you walk on in here and there's subs on either side of you, but Spacely, Supremo comes out. Oh. Tough gunfight with Crim6, but the healing is so darn good. He eventually gets the assistance needed, and now a chance to try to get the second checkpoint, but Pentagram counters. Pure fire on both sides. Everyone burns and that will be enough likely for the second checkpoint to come through. Yeah, TP just trying to zone away. He doesn't even know if anyone's in that window. H just peeks into the purifier and gets picked off. That's a checkpoint here. Four minutes, 43 left. That is plenty of time for Team TP. Absolutely it is. I mean, you still have a couple of the key ultras that haven't even been earned yet on either side. Most notably, the goggles have not seen those yet. So we'll see if that will come through early, very early. Egg huh. is coming through. You don't often get tested at this part, but I mean, they're running it. It's a two-man stack. The pack is moving quickly, but it definitely feels like this is a bit of a miss as far as the timing on this bubble goes. Yeah, look, four players on the pack, so it does move around pretty quick, but that Aegis has now expired and at last had the hairpin. Oh, right, wait a minute, Crimson. He has something to say about it. One of his own drops straight down, finds two. The only thing that I could really kind of explain of saying why that wasn't the worst play ever is the fact that there's still four minutes left. And you have to assume that you're going to earn another bubble on the yeah. offensive side before the four minutes is over. But it still feels like an uncontested moment where you didn't necessarily need it. So it's a bubble for bubble. Ultimately, the defense able to put themselves in a nice position of power. But the offense have the proximal spawns. Get back on. Kills come through. Crim6, careful. Don't want to fall here as now goggles are out, I think, on both sides. Yeah, this could be crucial here. Crim6. Got to be aware of the flank potential attack uh -oh. He's on one. That's Crim6 down. Pentagram able to avoid the shot. The 5-7 has been a little bit slippery and attached his hands so far today. But hey, the ACR does just as well. He's able to fire one kill, but Eggs with a key nade over towards the package, plus that kill is going to slow the attackers down again. And Spacely needs to control this high ground. This is such a key position if you want to try to not only set up a flank, but of course test the defensive setup from multiple angles and hold on a second no one even gets the read on this whatsoever Three, so it's an unbelievable now moment as attached continues to work on the low ground he gets shut down pentagram on the exit trying to regen and reset the fight and he both oh, oh will he man. ever so well done by pentagram slippery little serpent you he is. had better get up early if you want to get a better pentagram like that sliding straight into position there find an easy kill on space league two 49 on the clock. So plenty of time, realistically, for the attackers here to match John. It's Whoa! all about John. That's two key kills getting through the Biovita boost. Make it yet another three. And here comes Carlos. It's hard to push into this next part of the map. There's a mag barrier up here for John. That's the key, and it goes down. So now he can isolate left to right. Chance for the stack to come out. Two players are on. I don't know if there's any ultras to defend against this. They're still on the way in. Pentagram gets the double, but now at the final ticks to come through. Yes, they do it in faster time. How about that for an escort? Oh, buddy, Team TP, do it again. Two to zero here. Really starting to punish this teammate squad. And again, man, their SMG play so sick. I've got to say, Pentagrams does a great job defensively, right? It's not enough, though. My goodness, they're looking... I've been looking pretty heated on that eight side if I was them.
Oh my goodness, I wouldn't be very happy either because when I talked to them at the end of day one, well, Ake said he might give TP one map, one map. in the grand okay. final. <laughs> and, well, he now? gave him both of the first two maps. Now halfway there for Teep to be able to take the whole thing home. So, uh, Uber, what is going wrong that you're seeing for Team Ake's right now? Because they were so strong and they are a very good team. We just I haven't really seen that show here yet. So, okay, so Team TP capitalized very quickly off the first break. They actually get a favorable gunfight, mm -hmm. and straight away we go to Spacely. He's in crane position. We've got someone else playing yep. from, you know, the high ground above the slag pit, you know, in the warehouse. So straight away the defenders are pushing out of a choke. They were the ones that were actually defending a choke. All of a sudden they're pushing into one themselves. So the credit to Team TP, they very quickly established very powerful positions just, you know, outside of their own spawn, using the high ground, using the gantry way, and they continue to convert that I think you thought this Aegis here was maybe a little bit premature but then you sort of said hey well wait a minute they've got they're playing with house money sure they've got four sure. and a half minutes here to make their way through they get through a lot of these twists and turns with that Aegis and then it's just brute force to get the job done yeah it, it definitely came across when you initially come around that corner it's like well, you just got three dead why are we popping bubble but the thing is like you mentioned the time limit I think was the biggest part of that is that if things do get tight near the end you're gonna re-earn it and I think there's gonna be a lot of evaluation for players whether they're competitive or just looking to get their hands in the game of when is the best time to use those ultras considering the clock and looking over the scoreboard once more we've got a big pop off on the losing yeah. side Krim gets 7100 total damage for the L goes 33 and 33 even but 27 assists I mean the guy was everywhere well he was everywhere but it wasn't enough so you have to wonder maybe uh, that might be part of the problem shift is that they are everywhere. They're not really maybe you working as a sure. unit, as a team, having the cohesion that we know is so very important. And outside of the first stretch of that second half where Team TP were getting in those power positions, the second stretch, we did kind of note that there were a lot of individual gunfights that were happening for everybody on Team A. A lot of stagger from exactly. them. One at a time, exactly. drip feeding into that point and constantly being outgunned, outnumbered in many right. of those challenges. Yeah. Well, and what makes it worse, you're going up against some Someone like TP, the captain himself, with a purifier. He has <laughs> been so consistently flawless with its usage throughout the All-Star series. So we actually talked with TP about why he likes that purifier so much. My favorite uh, ultra is the purifier. Um, again, no matter where you're located, there's nothing they could really do about it if they don't have a bubble shield or anything like that. Clear out a hill, flamethrower, they're gone. Yeah, king of deforestation here. He turns <laughs> up and all the trees turn to cinders. I get here, like for TP, at the end of this clip is really interesting because he's basically zoning people away. He's yeah. like, okay, I have a good idea about where people might come from. I've only got a set duration to make use of this purifier. Let's just cover the map. And the thing that was really cool at the end of that clip, he actually elects to end the ultra early. So that way he could get into position with a long range weapon to keep that defensive line of scrimmage really far and up into the attacker's yep. face. That's a brilliant piece because I think a lot of people are going to say, I got my ultimate, I got to use it. I got to keep using it. But ultimately speaking, that is the perfect way to go about it. Take care of one in the back, clean up the zone, move back forward when he's got the ACR. So I love that usage from T. Well, Teep looking to tack on another win with map three. So let's take a look at where we're going and what mode we are playing. If there's a time for teammates to wake up, let's it's going go. to be on Noodleplex. It is going to be Occupy and Uber. You seem like you can't wait. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we had Noodleplex domination for Team TP versus Team Karma, thinking back to that first best of five. It was sick. It was really back and forth. It was a game type that looked like it really favored Team TP. The captain himself really stepping up. Again, phantoms are sick on Noodleplex. The mag barrier is really important if you want to control the middle part of the map. Unlike Domination, you're not always fighting in that part of the map, right? So it's a little bit more nuanced, but I tell you what, when the point moves there, it's going to get spicy. I can't wait. Noodleplex is on board, and this is where we saw TP's team shine when they were playing Team Karma early on. Can they do it again? Can they twist the knife a little deeper against teammates who have yet to see a map win? We'll find out in just a minute. Uber, Shift, are you guys feeling confident for teammates? Can they do it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, look, 
uh, like I, I can give the first map to Team TP and I can say, okay, maybe Team Axe a little bit slow to start. It's been a minute since that first best of five, but <laughs> yeah. two maps down and you like having the same sort of weaknesses in both. I'm definitely concerned for them here, Shift. Team TP, I imagine, want to start strong again. Yeah, and I think the thing on the flip is Axe and Co. just have to show supreme knowledge over the rotations on this map. How do you start off strong? How do you go from zone to zone here? Because if it continues to be Team TP just dominating in the kill feed, I do have worries. But to start, not bad. Opening time looking good for Team Aches. But I don't think they read that the spawns actually just flipped right then. Yep. So Team TP kind of come up from behind, surprise Team Aches' setup, and they get the counter break very quickly out. Yep. First point, of course, is going to be the middle part of the map here. So really gets us off and running, uh, starting middle clicks here for Occupy. And again, oh my goodness, it's uh, been all about Team TP so far. They get that early control. We're almost done with this point, though, so we're going to have a rotate away. Is it just me, Uber? Do you feel like every time we have like a 50-50 battle, somebody on Team TP pops up with a three-piece? Yeah. We saw it from John there on the break. Attach follows up to continue on the hold. Now, not a lot of time between these two, but again, that spawn flip we're talking about, that's going to have major implications as the next zone's going to be right behind the backside of Spacely, and they're going to have a really good forward setup here to get a read on where this hit's coming from as kills continue. Yeah. Yeah. to favor Team TP. I mean, we're watching Spacely, but uh, the rest of his teammates are doing a lot of the heavy lifting yeah. right now. Spacely, though, again, this is a key role right here. He goes towards new early, tries to catch some rotations through the periphery. TP there also cut down, so very important opportunity for teammates to start to establish themselves in this round. Yeah, I think they get a little bit too greedy, though. I mean, the setup just gets a little bit too far forward, and I believe Team Aix just got graced with a spawn flip just because they're getting beat up so badly. So it's one of those moments of you're being a little bit too dominant in the kill feed, forgetting to anchor up those spawns. And Team Aix will take small lead as we have still 20 seconds to fight for. Attach working with the rest of his squad mates to make sure there's some sort of contest, and they will get their break for the back 15. We can expect this to be pretty close for the next 30 to sort of 60 seconds here as both these teams are basically alternating time on the point. The fact that TP get this team TP really gets this jump time is pretty big. Attach, also a crucial frag there. We actually had a player, Pentagram, playing pretty far forward on new, uh, and uh, it'll be traded out eventually, but yeah, good in fight. And this is one of those zones that it's still in the middle of the map as far as how you go across the lanes, but it does favor this right-handed side. So it really comes down to, can you get this control in through mid? Because I always believe that this double window setup is so hard to break through. And you see TP trying to take that into his grips immediately, but Crib6 gets a triple, shuts down the setup, and Team Aix start accruing more time. They had him on three angles there, not much TP could have done. John trying to surge out, gets the trade, but that is going to be it. Team Aix getting position early here and really capitalizing wow. now. Making the most of this hill. And they're doing a really nice job just kind of reading when spawns very well may move. He's kind of set that little gut check reaction right at the end to get the read on the player trying to hit the long sided flank. So 12 seconds of scrap time looking good for Team Aches as they now start to move right across the middle to the other side. Again, it's still in the middle of the map. It's just defaulting to the left side perspectively rather than the right. Just comes down to can you get a setup and hold when it comes down to the spawns being all mixy. Yeah, Aches has got a pretty good idea about some of these spots to train his crosshair on as he comes around the corner knows that Spacely is going to be in a power. We've got a headshot box, essentially. This time, though, looking a bit better Dude. for Team TP. They have the numbers attached now. Uh, has the sonar goggles, and this time he's connecting these 5 7 hits. Yeah, I, I mean, what? We've, this is the third zone, and he's already earned one of the hardest ultras, I would say, to get, especially considering that you don't have the same kind of team play in the base of your utility that the other factions do. So that is an impressive early earn from Attach. He's already at 15% of the next one. I mean, he's really teeing off early, 17 and 9 off that quick look. But all that said, Team 8 still find a way to get on the objective and grow their lead. Three players from Team TP now working the extremities of this point. Attach wants to make sure no one's hiding in white. Crim6 was there, nice little wrap position. But as Attach makes that approach, his team gets cut down. Yeah, and this is dangerous now all of a sudden because as we start to siphon over towards the other extremity of the map, right behind the noodle sign in particular, you've got goggles out for Slack. So it's not Aix running it. Maybe they have double echelon? Hard to say, but we have not seen no, Slack on, on this 5-7 and a chance to kind of break things out, but no, shots just are not quite landing and these do, and that will lead to an opportunity for Team Deep to hold down to the setup. Medico Supremo here for Aix. The city was on the Libertad class now, and that's three. Give him another one. Four for Aix. The spawns come in very close to him, though, so he's not able to really convert too much on those, but hey, good lead Bubble. for Team Aix, and that's going to make it even harder. Hey, better check your six, John. Crimzix comes up from behind. Huge break. Key break for Team makes Team TP, they were throwing a lot at that zone, trying to hold on and get themselves back into the game. But now from the front, kills start to come through. 
Zone goes neutral for now. Everyone's still fighting from the front side. Attached changes it up, though. That will be enough for him to get the kill. And you would think, allow Team TP to jump on in, but still the bubble's being played uh, here for Grim, yes. and they're using this for every final second at our previous zone. Yep, I would say max value out of this Aegis has been acquired by Crimson and Co, and they are close to doubling Team TP's score. Looking pretty dire for the team that has started the series so strong. Had us feeling pretty confident for their, their fortunes coming into this map. We're back to the middle. Kill is going to be on the fountain. Yeah, and I will say this was a great zone from Team TP, but so far, the zones that find themselves in the middle of the map, talking about the first, the third, and the fourth, Team X has done a better job of reading the spawns and controlling the tempo of the map. So that's going to have to change here in the second rotation of zones for Team TP as he's fought back on board with Spacely, oh, trying to finish rat. it off, but he's ran out of ammunition, has to go to the reload, and, well, that leads to an opportunity for Team TP to essentially get taken away from the outsides of our first zone. Team X back on, accruing more time. Yeah, Team TP struggling uh, so far, no doubt about it. Like digital ghillie suit somehow able to avoid John for the time being, but John finds another three piece. That is going to be absolutely crucial. We're going to need to see that a couple more times to get Team TP back in this game. And look at that. Pentagram wastes no time in getting back to the point. Yeah, but they do spawn in place. Now it just comes down to don't do what you did last time, which was kill too good and get flipped because you're pushing too far forward. So you can kind of see there's more of an anchor. He's actually proactively going to pull the purifier, trying to shut down the play from the front, but he just completely gets bamboozled by the play around the back, and that's enough for a shutdown. There's a slight wind-up on the purifier there as well, so TP has to almost preempt someone pushing around the corner without giving away the fact that he is wa waiting for people there. All right, got a Sonar Goggles here for attack this one. A little bit less shock and awe, that's for sure. Uh, that seems like a miss right there. Remember that moment, for because for Team TP, those are two crucial ultras that get earned up, but... Ultimately, you don't really come away with much. One kill with the Purifier, a little bit of information, but they don't hold out of the zone the entire way through. In fact, Pentagram gives it another try. He's in a little 1v1 at the old time, and Krim will help turn the tides around. That's good enough for a little bit of a break here for Team Aix. Yeah, they are continuing now to lengthen that lead. Next hill coming up real soon. Crimzix want to play some of his longer angles alongside fellow Rifler Aix. Again, it's on that Libertad class, so... A lot of benefits to playing close to a Libertad teammate. Hang on there. Snarl it up a little bit on the plane. Quick. Aix there heading over towards the hilltop. He's going on the wrong side of that oh. barrier, but Spacely at least is able to trade. I think with that route, Aix was really trying to get a Supremo in for that break attempt, but there's just too many members to deal with. So now you sit behind the Magsec barrier. Krim really close to being earning another Aegis as he will just run right in towards the zone. Good follow-up from Slag, who does get at least a little bit of boost off of Aix, eventually getting that Supremo down. But the Aegis, the respawn comes out from John. He's going to run two. Pentagram with the bounce back. And now a 50-50 scramble for the last crap. No self-preservation instinct at all for Pentagram. And it doesn't matter. He's able to find those two quick kills and shut down the Aegis player. Aix, quite timely his arrival here. Catches Spacey from an <laughs> off angle and doubles it down. This is all Team Aix all the time right now. The saucy transfer from Aix just snaps over to the second. Gets two, Pentagram gets the final. Over towards Slide, Krim thinking about it. Oh, but over the top, he actually gets scouted out. Big kill from John. It looked like there was about to be an Aegis pop, but now everything resets. Attach, yeah, trying to be cute. Slack saw straight through it, literally. And coming off the rip, he's able to get back involved once more. Team TP getting up to 120 here. There is opportunity, but it can't be allowed to go big. And Crimson wants to shut it down, brings out the sidearm. Spacely decimated. Aegis available here. 30 seconds left on the zone. Sendiri drone just to clear a little bit of space. Contest on the opposite side. Attached shut down. Spacely essentially by himself. Needs to wait for help. But the thing is, there may not be a lot to come here. I mean, you've got a little bit of help from TP, but look at the setup from Team Aix. They still can reinforce from multiple angles. Kills are looking good, and now the lead once again re-established at 40-plus seconds. And Krim was going to come back with the Aegis if he really needed it. If there's more time left on the zone, you may have seen it. But he'll save it to secure yeah. basically the win right. Should be that way. Just comes down to can they get into position for him to safely pop this. Trying to clear space over through the slide area. Set up looking pretty good for Team TP in the back. Can they hold? Can they anchor? Do they have any ultras to try to lock things up? May not need it. First three kills are good. Crimson might get a call. They didn't quite get to the point, but the rest of his teammates are there. John needs a top up. Team TP needs this zone to get back into the game. So far, so good. Taking a look. Yes, you do have a purifier up for TP. You're getting really close to another goggles for Tatum to be his third. 
And here's the pure fire from TP. Trying to set up the hole, but he only gets one again. Ace completely decimates. It's just down to John. Last one standing. The break looking good. One last battle around the back. Spacely was able to take the win, but still cannot get into the zone. Yeah, 15 seconds left on that zone. Teammates benefiting from most of it. This lead is billowed out to 46 and counting. John gonna make his way across here. Knows where next is gonna be, but he wants to be lying in wait for someone. The walk straight in his waiting arms. It's gonna be slack. He thinks better of it. Run straight into Crimsix. Yeah, now you've got goggles up. This has to work for attach. Bubble to stopped. counter. Oh my goodness, he's trying to chip away at it. It does deal some significant damage. He's also taking care of the teammates, but hold on a second. Krim is still alive and well. Getting one with the scatter gun. Attach pinched up. The kills come out and teammates are gonna hold. All right. Spicely here on the, the point in the middle of the map. It's gonna be Slack working oh. off from the side. That's gonna be a bit of a tough one there. We cut the Crimsix just as he is brought down. Mag Barry is going to be available now. 203 plays 154. Wow. He makes him such a comfortable lead here. But Aix not able to get the Supremo out. Counter Bubble comes through. The nade will deal some damage, but Slack doesn't have a lot of help. Neutral goes the time for now. But still an opportunity for Team TP to reinforce with a bit of speed. 10 seconds to fight for, and they do have the rotation set up for new. Krim trying to change that good kill onto the old time, but they need to work their way across the map still. Krim, though, keeping him staved off. This is pretty dangerous here. Time ticks down when no one's sat on the point, of course, and that does not favor Team TP. Krim6 wants to surge ahead now. Team TP able to start on you, obviously, with the good spawn. Aixico pushing up oh, here. Many. Look at that. There goes Supremo going to be popped. Aix able to find a tag. Oh. oh, my. The Ultras are all getting busted out now. The special occasion was right about here. I love that call. Pentagram, even though he only gets one, he shoots down the Supremo, Three. getting more, and he clears out the outside. Now the goggles from Slack trying to finish the deal. Still 26 seconds left for this zone. They cannot fully win it here, but boy, will they be knocking on the door. Yeah, it's going to be awful close. Going to be lighting a fire on the team TP to get towards next as soon as possible. Slack gets a lot of information. Not a whole lot else out from those sonar goggles. Kills are still coming through, though. Again, this rotation's not terribly far away. Pentagram trying to work over towards New. He's going to get shut down by Teep and all. Oh, big follow-up from John. So kills are in. 180 plays 232. No Supremo for Spacely, just using it on the previous zone. Are there any other tools available while Team TP try to chew back into the game? It's got to be all Team TP from here on out. They cannot let Team Ace back into the hill. Purifier up for TP. He's going to have to use that defensively here. 192. They're getting closer. John and Attack firing up at just the right moment. There might be something here. Have to have some longevity on the zone. And off, off spawn, I, I keep probably got to have to pop this pure fire. Threat has been established, and the location of the threat is also now known. Just comes down to can they secure the kills? Down around the back. Long range shots towards Needed the kills are not good. It's just down to team. Last one left. The bag suck barrier, though, does its job pretty darn well. Follow up from attack with the sonar goggles. Looking good to tree. Stave off this next hit attempt. You got to keep in mind the rotation's not too far on the other side of the map. You just have to try to see it. But it looks like team are the ones that start. This is pretty scary stuff. They're gonna get that extra little bit of time. 21 seconds left here. Team TP need to be sat here, and that's a nice little starter for Spicely. Finds two. It's gotta be more where that came from. And, and Team TP cannot get off the zone with only 20 seconds of game clock left. We have yet to see a game of X Defined end by game clock, but this one very well could, depending on how the contest or the potential neutralization comes out. Trying to get their way back in. 38 seconds to fight for. Magsec barrier for the break attempt. Here it comes. It's going to be broken by TP. He needs to get rid of that right now. Pentagram up in his face, but he's having to least secure the train. Crimsix is going to be there, though. Spacely comes forward. 229, 14 seconds left on game clock. TP and Co. have to commit to the point. That's a big one. Spacely be able to push in. Find Slacked as well. And now the gap is closing. 235, 239. This zone, another 15 seconds left on it. It all ends here. Well, the contest is in. 240 to 239. 10 seconds of game clock. This one's coming down to the line. Oh. Crim's got the Aegis. They could also still win it here, I believe. There's everything being popped. They make the call. Will Team Aegis get on the scoreboard for the first time? It looks like, yes, the contest is out. We're going to go to another zone. Wait, they got the contest in time. Six seconds of game clock. Someone's got to jump on the zone. TP get there. Eight points left. Crimsix heading over now. Magbury going to be established. But he's going to right in the way. John trying to push through. John with two. That's huge. 249 plays. 249. Unreal. Team TP. Stave off Team Aches. What a come from behind victory. And you better believe they're getting loud.
Well, TP said he didn't need to get loud, but after a comeback like that, you certainly should. I, I'm nothing less than uh, a bungling of that from from Team Aches. That is that is the map you were doing so well. You were seeing consistent failed ultra usage out of Team TP, whereas you were seeing much better gains out of those ultras from Team Aches. And yet somehow, some way, you're not able to close it out. Shift. Look, here's the thing. It's 250 to 249. We could pick apart 18 million different moments where one second could have been earned. But at the end, the most critical portion you saw. All the face up. It was Krim that was on point with Aegis. The Suprema was popped behind it. They say we can win on this zone. Use everything. But the thing about it is, all it took was one little slide in for a contest. The rotation was there with just enough time in the game clock. That was ultimately the decision that turned the tides. And that's a lot of resilience and restraint, yeah. I would say, for Team TP to understand that, get the touch, and then rotate. Beautifully done. Uber. Uh Losing full might be a delicate way of <laughs> describing Team Aix right now. If I were them, certainly. Uh, if you have a map, a, a comeback map, you get that. You are just down one. You can 100% tie it up. And now you're down three. They are one map away. You must reverse sweep the entirety of this grand final. How do you regain? I mean, if we, if we were talking about anybody else than Aix and the rest of this team, yeah, I might think they're probably done. <laughs> but time and time again, the players on this roster have come back from, and I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, worse situations than this. The reverse sweep's absolutely on the cards, but frankly, you're pissed off after that one. You put all your eggs in that sort of second to last zone here, that moment, you see John just saying, I'm going in, I'm putting my body on the line here, we're gonna make sure there's no touch, no contest. Absolutely absurd. You've got to put this behind you. You've got the rest of the series to look forward to if you can hang in there. And of course, that $10,000 winner take all prize. This oh my God. was the sickest game of X Defiant I have seen to date. I can't believe it. Pentagram 53 34, and it's not For enough. For the loss. You are every punching map, air. Every map, you have either had someone with the highest damage, the highest kills on Team Aches, and yet it is loss after loss after loss. Ah, that one stings. I, I mean, the win condition was set. The call was made. We win. Pop ultras. Never mind. I mean, it's just, that is, if that doesn't get you excited about what competitive X Defiance is going to look like, I don't know what will. That is one of the most electric finishes I think we've ever seen. And on the other side, Atachu had a really hot start, yeah. didn't slow down. He earned, no. what, three different goggles in that map? That's unbelievable pacing when it comes to earning that ultimate up. Well, not only that, too. I mean, just, uh, I, I think it goes back to talking about composure over and over and over. TP said it, right? He, he's a composed person. He's not worried about it. And you need to have that in your back pocket if you're going to make a comeback like that. You're simply not going to otherwise if you feel like you've already lost or you're sitting there and that chaos gets to you. The comms start to degrade and everything falls apart. And unfortunately, that might be what's happening right now oh, for man. Team X. Oh. But you know what, Uber? We're going to give them a moment. We're going to go to a break. We're going to breathe in. We're going to exhale. And we're going to get ready for zone control, so don't go anywhere. Potentially the ending or the beginning of an incredible reverse sweep when we get back from this break.
ever a time to shake it off, teammates. I hope they were dancing during that break because after a colossally horrendous loss there in that Noodleplex Occupy, I mean, let it go, uh, have fun, try to hit the regain, but Uber, oh, well, I'm, I'm just, I, I still feel bad. I wasn't even playing. They are dancing. They are rage shadow boxing. <laughs> uh, they are punching air. They are trying to stop the steam from coming out of their ears. It's frustrating, no doubt about it, especially that that's the map where they get back in this series and they start yeah. with such a big lead. At some points, the lead is up like 50 plus points. That's just mental. And now we swing over to the maps and modes. I said they're gonna probably have to get it started on Noodle. They almost did, but who knows? Maybe they're just adding to the drama and midway zone control is where they are going to start to shine. And well, they have to, because again, uh, a best of seven and I'm not great with math shift, but I think if Team gets one more, he's gonna win. Yeah, you don't need to be a math scientist to do that math. I'll say that much. And here's the interesting thing, keeping the narrative on towards Team X. Since they 3-0'd in their qualifier round, we didn't get a chance to see them play zone control at all so this is going to be kind of a fresh look in terms of this map mode combination in particular the only thing we can really draw off of was when they played their escort they did play it on midway and they looked very comfortable so you're still playing the same map it's just a little difference of how you actually treat the objectives but I still that is a tough loss to bounce back from a team makes need to show some composure right here right now will the midway ferris wheel light up for Team TP and grant them that Grand Finals All-Star Series win, we are about to find out if Team Aches can bring it back from the depths. Uber and Shift, take it away. Oh man, we have uh, very quickly ended up in a compromising position if we're fans <laughs> of Team Aches here. Yeah. It is now do or die heading into midway. Uh, look, I think you mentioned previously, Shift, that you know last time we saw teammates on this map, it was Escort, yes. Different game type, they looked really good. But hey, think back to Escort in this series, uh, Team TP were yeah. above. Yeah, it's definitely been what it feels like, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, Uber, it kind of feels like a mismatch. Ooh. I mean, are you kidding? The pop-offs from the side of Team TP have been all over the four-man roster. So their defense looking to get aggressive. Oh, opening bag, Mexico for Team X will try to threaten over towards this A zone right off the rip. Great info, though. TP, I mean, able to say, hey, they're all coming right hand side. Unfortunately, sometimes good info. Yeah. yeah it doesn't matter <laughs> if you can't really execute on it. So Pentagram and Co. explode out of spawn here. It's basically trying to prevent Axe from wrapping behind, which would have been devastating here. And now, hey, it's all like Donkey Kong. Oh, and the shots coming out of space. Like clean, quick swap back over to the pistol. One more to deal with. That's slacked. He keeps the offense onto the A zone for now. And the defense is going to give it one more good heroic try to stave off the play. And they are successful on the reclamation. Four for one goes the train. There goes the element of surprise for teammate. That yep. one is done and dusted. Woo. Now Team TP have a chance to settle into this a little bit more. What do teammates have up their sleeves now? If they keep throwing bodies at the point, that's all well and good, but they've only got two minutes, ten, to get both of these cap points. And deep, if he feels that he can make a play, he's got the firebomb at the ready. He can just jump into a window, pop it, clear the zone with one fell swoop, and that very well may be happening right here, right now. No, does not need to happen. Wait oh, a minute, that's the... dirty! <laughs> okay, it's both too soon. Oh dear, TP knew someone would likely be there. He's able to line that one up straight away. Aegs picks him back off, off the respawn, minute 44 left. Crimzix was able to wrap up through the middle part of the map. It looks like John was not ready for it here. Looks like your attack has started to find some traction. Yeah, this will be the first segment at B, gone, ready to go. Follow up from the rest of the team, looking good as they continue to push in towards the Hellenid Forest, just a little bit deeper here at this, I don't even know what this is, this little lobby area, I don't know. I mean, it's just complete domination control. Stack it, get it, move on to the next thing. Working out well for Team so far. And the time extension after taking Team A, helping Team A see a little bit more. And they'll have another extension here. If they can hold on to the point, but that might be in question. B almost captured, attached though, clears Pentagram off, and the defenders have a leg to stand on somehow. I have no idea how they managed that. <laughs> I mean, the MagSec barrier was deleted instantaneously, but attached bursts through, finds the shots, gets a chance to contest. Aegs trying to single-handedly take over the zone. It's basically overwhelmed though, and that will be the extra 90 seconds added. All right, now we are on the road. Team makes with three minutes 40 to work with here to approach the next phase of the map we're heading to the haunted house here and we'll see slacks make his run through this right hand side again the stairway can be tough to navigate there's a lot of stairs to deal with here the defenders usually wanted to set up more towards this 
What is this, Egyptian tomb? Yeah, yeah, it, and it's, it's right behind this zone. These high ground positions are so hard from the offensive side to shrug players off of, which is why I think you're starting to see players like Slack trying to get a little bit beyond the zone, put a little bit of pressure on the defense. Yeah, Aix is doing the exact same thing on the other side. Thing is, the kills from behind are not quite that good, so Aix has now self-isolated himself, and that will be enough for the defense to get the kills. Let's have a listen to Team Aix now as they look to it make a capture on point C. Once you hit his camo popped close to mid. Yo, I, have my I got ult. one. I have my ult. I, I got you. Nice. Mid, 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 TP. Dead. He's not trying nice. Should be good. He's behind me. Deep right, deep right. Yeah, yeah, dead. Four, four, four. Nice. nice. I'm on it. Let's tag, 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 tag. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Put a bubble in. Pop and heal. I got a barrier. I'm looking deep. I'm watching mid. I have right room. We only have three on it. Yeah, get on it. They need it. Spread. Okay. I have right. I have right. Where's you? He's deep left. Far left, far left, far left. Deep left, deep right. I'm near. Right, one shot, one shot, one shot, mid, one shot, mid. Almost have it. Just play my life. Oh, far left. Oh, right, done. Wait, you see, yo, just play, just play, just play. Yeah. Two no, more. Good try, good try. One's it's hitting right. Up, There's two, two on point right now. Yeah. I have sonar, shall I pop it? Prim, we should get left room right now. Get left room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just oh, right corner. We got two in the right room. Two in the right corner. I hear. I have your help in a sec. There's two in the right. Space, yeah, space is there. Oh, yeah, I'm popping my ult. I'm helping you right. Put chat out. Nice. I'm on it. I got three. Right. I, I have the right. I'm Let's pushing the right. One shot dead. Did we get it? Nice. I have we'll the right. It. Get on it. I'm literally in fucking guilds right, right now. Push mid. Me. Fall off to me. Two mid. Okay. John, one bullet. Dead, dead. But John's one bullet on my ex. Yeah, right outside the door. Dead. Right outside the right door. I think there's one behind him too. I John dead. John dead. Nice. John dead. I'm pushing. I have your help on the right. I'm with you, Porter. Yo, I'm putting old on point. I'm putting old on point. Get on it. 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 They're gonna go mid. Watch out. Yeah, help me mid. Yeah. I'm team shot on this with you. Oh, deep off, deep off, catch. Catch is weak. They need it. They're from their side. They're bubble, bubble, bubble. They're all there. Oh. They just used bubble. Okay. We got yeah. good yeah. progress. Mid lane. Shields Middle. pushing out right. Oh, one's left. There's two, left. two right. Uh, one's weak. I got one. One more, one more. There's a jump in there. I don't like the idea there from yeah. Aik Shift going the Medico Suprema on the point, but it expires. He pops it maybe a little bit too early there. Yeah, that's all four ultras used in the last two zones here for Team Aik's. Good recovery, though, after a little bit of a miscue. I mean, the Aegis found so much value, as you mentioned, but still, the offense finding a way to get back on towards zone. Defensive Sonar Goggles now coming through, but there is a MagSec barrier in the way that needs to be destroyed. Oh. Actually, the Purifier comes out first, and ultimately, that's not bad. Team Aik's get the full shutdown. They also get the zone now three minutes and 40 seconds to approach e uh, attach goes in with the sonar goggles and gets absolutely nothing he just gets rinsed by ace as soon as he rounds the corner so two ultras expended there by the defenders for no real result and now we're on to point e solo supremo in arcade also being used here by team tp Don't we've, look, we've had yeah. opinions about their ultra usage to be fair yeah uh, in that karma matchup quite often yet they still prevailed so Got to give him the benefit of the doubt here. It's not decision space league. He's gone for it there. He had no other choice but to try and plunge through the mag barrier. Yeah, and now you've gotten the kills you need here if your team team to try to hopefully lock things down, get a good solid setup as far as where this offense is coming from. Pistol was on oh, point for the main lane. Pentagram gets the turner. That's going to be good for the double, and now teammates can start to approach the Z zone. That, that movement, the fact that you can change direction in midair makes it very, oh, very man. hard to catch players like that. That's them, that's them zoomer mechanics really coming out. Yeah, Pentagram now on his second purifier. He earned this one super quickly. Aix shutting down the long-range shots. This will get the offense a chance on the E zone. Spacely able to recover just a touch, though. And it really, for me, comes down to like which part of this zone do you want defensively? Because if you can get in towards things like Arcade, that's great. Again, isolate the offense to have to hit through one side or the other. It's basically living dangerously there, not giving himself enough time to fully regen, and Crimzix punishes. The cap has begun, but it's tentative. It has to be by the attackers. It's a very wide open point. John Doe wastes very little time. Nothing tentative about this guy. P punches straight down the right-hand side, wants to push past the point. Good spot for a Magberry here. It's thinking about it. it, it just comes down to he is the only player forward. And Man. oh my goodness, he is just sending it now with the ACR in his back pocket. Well done by John, pushing the offense back just a touch. In towards arcade he goes, Magsec Barrier will establish his foothold. And now it's just down for the offense. What do you have available to try to crack through this defensive setup? Nice to have two primaries, isn't it? It uh, really is. Yeah, John yeah. really making great use of both <laughs> of those there. TP finding two elsewhere is going to put the defense in good stead here. And okay. Great start for Team AC. We're starting to run a little bit skinny on time. 90 seconds approaching. They have to have something earned up here soon, though. Pentagram off his second ultra. 
you have to think that you're going to have something like a barrier. Yeah, here Supremo we go. getting close. So, yeah, the timing, I think, from Team Eggs offensively on that approach towards C and D gave them enough leeway to earn these up a second time when it matters the most. One minute, 15 seconds. Here comes the offense. Oh, Eggs, not ready for that. That one hurts. It's picked up by Spacely at a pretty extreme range, and Pentagram might have found two, but who's not going to cut it now? One minute, seven seconds left in the round. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, and Pentagram isn't able to keep his life either, so your only player forward is Krim here on the left side. Slacked now joins him. Aegis not ready. Goggles not ready. It's just the Supremo at the moment. 54 seconds on the clock. Attached John for two rat. kills, and there's the third. Uh-oh, defense is going to really push forward and use this clock to their advantage. My goodness. Cooking up something special, what's attached there. That Aegis will be crucial for this point cap, though. And you can see that's why Crimzix is being patient about it. But he's running out of time. Yeah. They can stack Ultras here. They should be able to find a round finish. Uh, he needs to still earn it, I think, too. I don't know if he's got it at the moment. So not only do you need to earn that Aegis up, how do you get into position to actually get on the zone and use it? TP again with two. Pentagram could be a factor here. Oh, no, the Aegis is in play. Aegis, though, cool, calm. Going to work around it here. Staying outside of its radius. And he's trying to stay back. Attach is there, though. He's, he had to get there. There's no other option. Ten seconds on the clock. I mean, he needed to use the Supremo. And now you're in a spot here where all of a sudden you're kind of just desperately trying to get your way on towards the zone. See if you can force an overtime. And hold on a second. Krim has gotten the Aegis up. He's on for the zone capture. Two ticks gone, but also the same right. The bubble's destroyed. It's going to be a one respawn, at least for the defenders here, though. Sonar goggles for Slack. Supremo Pays in. Off. Attach taken down. We're getting awful close on the cap. And in overtime... Team Eggs breathe a sigh of relief. They have a map completion with no time left. And that basically sets a runway for Team TP to try and beat them. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing about it is you're going to feel decent about the 100%, but it did take a long time to get that final zone to even find any sort of success. So, yeah, I think there is groundwork here where if you're looking at this from Team TP, you almost held off that defense, but at the same rate, did you do enough? I think they're going to be feeling pretty confident in their ability to keep this zone control in their favor. Just comes down to will they actually find the early success? We kind of hearkened towards that in the escort. They were not stopped at all in that first bit of progress. Can they do that here on A and B? Where for Team Aches, they took a while to get those two zones. Win condition set for Team TP. It's all on the line right now. Teammates, how do you live this down? Going down zero <laughs> to four in a best of seven against a team that are, you know, in theory, you know, getting their first crack at teaming up competitively. Yep. In this esports-esque environment with X Defiant as opposed to teammates, obviously, who was in that first showcase. Slow and steady out of the gates here. No yeah. rush here for Team Team. And I love that. Get a feel. I mean, so often I feel like for all of us who played in the beta and beyond, it was one of those throw everything at the first bit. As soon as those barriers drop, drop all your utility. Not the case for Team TP. They say, use all of your stuff. We'll deny it. We'll use ours uh, later when we start to find some success and now a little sneaky action out of attach trying to hold on to this A zone. Yeah, hard to see him oh. standing still and he wins that one out. How? Pentagram's got no to be way. absolutely spewing. Three. Oh, surely not. Okay, two for attach, but a lot of damage. And that really sets TP up to lean into this a little bit more. Firebomb used there, but Ake's able to stay clear of it for the time ah. being. He's getting healed up as he goes, but Spicy has that Biovita boost and Pentagram run down. This is the first time we've actually seen Elementio being used here for Ake's. He doesn't go for the Biovita boost. He's got that little statue healing aura right on the backside of the Zay zone. So the defense can keep just throwing shoulders, getting healed up, throw shoulders, get healed up. You need to throw they an EMP or something like that to try to get that off the board as we continue through this map, because that could be a problem. The pace feels pretty similar to Team Ake's on the attack here from Team TP. So a lot of question marks about this next zone. That's a pretty good start. Magberry comes up. It's probably too early for a lot of these Ultras to really be up, but attach. Now being able to open up the account here with TP and John playing off this zone, getting these kills. Oh dear, it could be over. Yeah, I, Remedio's down again, but is it too late? I, I mean, the kills are still coming through. You have to jump in and John. challenge. Uh, so well done with support from Space and the Bio Vita will get him healthy once again. Boosted back up. Nades on the way in, but damage already dealt. Team TP, four minutes and 15 seconds to get over to C. Getting close to that first wave of Ultras here. The, I mean, if we have a player getting theirs nice and early, this could make a huge difference. So look at this, Attach and TP back to back making their way through. I like how Crimson Always pushing yeah. forward, pushing past the objective. He's able to find the trade at the very least. Yeah, that's a nice double from Krim. It does a really nice job just kind of shutting down that quick rotation. But while we have a moment where Team TP are trying to set themselves up and get an approach over towards C, prime time for Team TP listening. Nice, good one. Uh, they're, they're right, the pillars, the pillars. No, I threw a shit down for you guys. I threw a shit down. He fell down. Dead? I'm on point with you. I have a deal. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna one on the left, one on the left. 
Watch out for that nade. We have heals. Just stack point. We yep. have heals. Yeah, just stack it. Uh, right. I have right. Hold the right hallway. Right. Hold the right, right two, hallway. Two, 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 One more. I'm not trying. I got one. one yep. I'm staying down. No, there's two middle. Two middle. I'm one shot. I'm staying down. I'm staying down point. Select one shot. I my ult. I my ult. I'm not getting used yet though. I have mine as well. Okay. Hold the right. Oh no, he shielded. Well, shielded, shielded. Yeah, he's pushing. He's pushing. That's going. I'm staying down. They're still on the shield. They can stay behind this. Heady. Underground race. Nice. They're, they're ramp. They're ramp. They're ramp. They're ramp. And push up right. Still right. Still right. Yeah. Push right through. Push right through. Push right through. Go, 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 yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, Select one shot underneath you guys. Nice. I'm on D. Alright, let's go. I have my old two minutes. bombers here for one's E. One's weak. Yeah, one's yeah, middle. One's middle. Thing. One's middle. Yo, I'm pitching the left. Give me a sec. Middle dead. Middle dead. Give me a sec. Arcade. Done. Nice. I'm about to be behind him. Keep one push you guys. I'm watching Finch. He's dead, I got one. I don't want right, I don't want right. Dead. Nice, that's two. Who has who who Loki popped all? Stack, 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 stack. Alright, yeah, take your time. You right. Don't pop nah, them all at once. Don't pop them all at once. That's my bad. Two hitting up right right now. Watching the mid, John. I'm gonna stack with you guys. Bubble, bubble, shoot it. I bubbled. I'm shooting their bubble. I just shot it. Bubble should be gone. There's two more in front of me. Two more. Two more in front of me. One more. Stack this. Nice. Go quick. Nice. Yo, I'm using my ult. I'm, 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 I'm ulting. I'm ulting. Dead. Keep right. On it. You got two. Five minutes. They're mid. Close up. Close up. Close up. Close up. Dead. Let's go. Stack. Stack. Four. Okay. Four. Four. Stack. Stack. Come on point. I saw it, bro. Get the shield. Mid. They're mid. Dead. Full oh, man. Talk about anti climax in this matchup. <laughs> Four minutes fifty on the clock. Team TP are knocking at the doors. Team X uh, entering the danger zone right now. Then already point E is under pressure. The defense hasn't put together a fight anywhere. It feels like every single call from Team TP has been perfect. When to use ultras, when you have them, when you're going to hold them. Everything looking aces right now for Team TP. They're nearly halfway done with the last zone and there's still so much time on the clock. Attach wants to surge ahead here. Wow. Why not? That's extreme range finding Slack here, and he's standing tall, standing proud. Pop the digital ghillie suit. This could give him the edge on the next person to peek out of that spawn. Crimzix traded out here. This just isn't enough from Team Aix. We're getting now to the death of things. John eventually cut down on a chance for the defenders here, but I mean, Team TP, they're on the precipice, man. And this has to be flawless defense. You need to get control of both sides of Arcade, and you have to hold it. Because with this much time on the clock, you're going to get another wave of these Ultras if you're Team TP. It's, it feels like only a matter of time. So something has to spark here for the defense with their backs up against the wall. It's just not a good enough defense again from Team Aix. We saw it from them on the Escort game type as well. Team TP just a hair faster. In multiple increments means they have a four minute almost lead yeah. here. They've got to get the job done, though. This would be a monumental, I want to say historic. The game's just come out, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> a monumental defensive epic here from teammates if they can hang on. Well, so far, it's looking all right. Oh, John will have a no. chance to touch. Supremo is at the ready for Space League, by the way. I think that's the next Ultra up. TP's getting really close to his Purifier, but the thing about it is everyone's going to have a chance. And if you're looking at this from Team TP's perspective, you may just want to wait till you have all four and just pop them all together. That could be win condition. And now a chance at the barrier to is. do it. And oh my goodness. Clean as you'd like, Uber. Flawless, 4-0, no stop anywhere for Team Aix. Unbelievable. Team TP get it done in four? What? Man, they really had to fight for it in their first matchup against Team Karma. They'll put through their paces. But they triumph here against the Team Aix, who we really thought would be breezing through after how they showed up against Team Pac-Man. Very impressed. Fantastic performance here, I've got to say, man. There, these, uh, there are some serious <laughs> guns on this uh, Team TP squad. My God, John there in those final moments securing it. Conspiracy theory. Aix isn't allowed to win because he works on this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reach. I'm trying to give him something, That's, okay? Yeah. This was a little rough in the grand final. I don't even final. think he'd try and use that as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights here. Truly a masterclass performance from Team TP, everyone across the board, showing us what some of the highest level X-Defying gameplay can look like. And I just still can't get over 
that incredible Occupy we saw earlier. I know, I know we got to talk about this map, but like it just, it just felt like that was the nail in the coffin. This was put, put a bow on it and put him to rest. Yeah, I, I think in both maps, you could kind of point to the same things where patience was almost a virtue off the breakoffs yeah. a number of times for Team TP where you know they're going to throw all their nades, you know they're going to use all their utility. Let's wait. Let's counter that barricade. Let's save our EMP for when that gets placed down, then let's use our own. That kind of gives you an early power swing. We saw that on the defensive side here for Yo, Occupy and then on the offense. Look at God. the damage smokes, on dude. every, that is all four maps. Krim, Pentagram, over 7K. They either, again, had the most damage on the map or they had the most kills and they lost every single time. But this is what we're trying to, this is what we're trying to tell people. I mean, Extra Find is about so much more than that, right? The gun plays a central role in it, but again, how you make use of those abilities. I want to say on the on the listen in, we heard Team TP say, hey, don't use all those ultras at once, right? Team's popping here, yeah. so we're gonna save ours for the cap. They really tried to make sure that they rationed them out over those last phases of the map. And Team standing up again. I mean, there's no doubters. There probably weren't any doubters in the first place, maybe just for the sake of devils or advocate yeah, we were doubters. True. We're not doubting at all. Congratulations, Team TP. Absolutely mind-blowing stuff here. Very, very well deserved. Each of these players getting their fair share of pop-off moments here. X Defiant really lends itself, I think, to individuals like this. And now we're gonna head over to the stage with Casey to get some words from the winners. I'm joined on stage by the two team captains who made it to the grand final here at the X Defiant All-Star Series, but only one of those captains came out on top, none other than Team TP, a phenomenal performance across the board. But before we get into what worked so well to get you that win, I want to talk to Aches because you started this so strong against Team Pac-Man, you got the sweep, and then going into this grand final, it just didn't seem like things were clicking. So what exactly happened? Yeah, I mean, I think... Well, first off, we started pretty slow. They came out, I think, hotter than we expected. Um, I think they had a lot of momentum carrying from that last series. Um, after that, that Noodle Plex domination game that we lost by one point, I think that was a kind of a nail in the coffin for us almost. And then, uh, yeah, they were just playing really well. So congrats to them. Well, that's something we talked about on the desk, actually, was that moment, I believe it was John slid in to contest for a fraction of a second. You'd utilized a lot of those ultras on that point, including the Aegis out of Crim 6, and you just couldn't get to the point in time. There was just no regain after that, because we watched your faces, and it, it was a little tough. Yeah, I mean, look, we tried to regain. We, we obviously captured all, all zones on the, on the first side of Midway, but... Um, I think what it was really was Pentagram got the first death in that situation, which spawned him out. And then I don't know who it was that slid in for you guys that got that last second. But we knew we won off that had that not happened. And so I thought, you know, we were going into that thing like, all right, it's one, two now. But um, yeah, I mean, we regained, we, we captured all zones and then they just came out hot on that second side and, and did it faster. So. I think something important about that, though, is that it was the most electric map that we watched. And I think it showed what X Defiant can be at the highest levels and how exciting it can be. So from a dev perspective, when you look at an event like this, what did you like about it? What are you hoping to see for the future? And what do you want people's takeaway to be for X Defiant? Yeah, I mean, so like as a player, I hate when that happens. But as a, you know, someone working on the game and, and obviously watching this, you know, I think that that was what we want. That's what you know we expect and and, and we hope for for this. So, um, you know, watching matches all all weekend was really exciting. Seeing you know how how exciting some of these games can be. Um, I'm just super excited for the future of X Defiant. Thank you so much, Aches. All right, Teep, we gotta talk because that was incredible. A 4-0. I didn't expect it to go that way, but you got it done. So you said it at the beginning, right? Composure. I don't need to get up and shout. You had a couple teammates though that did. Yeah, they were getting involved. Um, that hard point, 250 to 249, like that was just wild. I, I, it's kind of like a dagger map. We we're kind of saying it afterwards. As long as we came out and put up a decent defense on map four, we felt pretty good about it, came out. And like Pat said too, we came off of a grueler of the series right before that. And I think them coming in, having to wait that long as well. It's a long series, long time to wait. We just had that upper edge in the first couple of maps and we just carried that momentum as well as possible. And then 
all the maps we played, like I said, I'm so happy we played five maps in that first one. Our teamwork got better and better of like utilizing the ults, uh, the ultras at the right time and not wasting them, burning multiple at some time. We weren't perfect with it, but the longer we played, the more efficient we got with it. And we got so much value and so much damage in, in all these situations. So. Now, I know that we introduced zone control to you earlier on in the first day of the All Stair series, but I wanted to know, Teep, your opinion on it. Playing through that zone control, it helped you get that final win on that map. So what did you think? What did you like about it? Um, I, I like the the team aspect of having to utilize like your utility as best as possible on the points. Um, I'd probably change a couple of things about the time and things like that to up the pacing a little bit. But besides that, th the fact that you have like a linear map like that where it feels like you're always you always have a chance, right? So even if you get wiped out quickly on that first point, or even maybe not set the best time, you're, you can always come out in defense and. and basically spawn trap people and who doesn't like to do that so it's fun well it's fun for you maybe not so fun unfortunately for team ax but you you are officially our first tournament prize pool winner for an x define event so i have to ask tp are you back i don't know i, I was looking pretty good i you don't were. know i'm getting up there in age for gaming <laughs> years i guess but shoot i mean if they keep putting on stuff like this, I'm sure, you know, if the competitive scene for X Defiant is going to be thriving. So I'll check it out. I might dabble. Oh, we like that. We like when they dabble and we love when they play the gameplay. Incredible. Thank you so much, TP Aches. TP, congratulations again on your victory. Now, don't go anywhere. We're not done just yet. We'll be right back after the break. Detected. Weapons hot. Activating sonar. Enemy, enemy, attack. enemy spotted. Multiple kills confirmed. They'll never see us coming. <laughs> One final welcome back from the Exifiant All-Star Series. As we look to wrap things up, I'm your host, Katie Bedford, joined by Uber and Shift. And what a delightful event this <laughs> has been. Some of the most incredible gameplay we've seen. The highest highs, the lowest lows, playing out in the bracket of all four of those teams. Let's take a look one more time to see how everything went. Team Aches with that sweep over Team Pac-Man. Good tidings, but not how it turned out in the grand final. But really, Team TP Shift feels like they cut their teeth on that game five with Karma going the distance, giving them that experience, maybe, that, that extra bolstering to get it done in the finals. Yeah, that's just, I think, again, resilience came through, composure came out, and the trust, I think, for all four of those guys mm -hmm. being put together really went up. Yeah, big ups, to, of course, to Team TP. A uh, huge fan of this squad already. They really showed why they are some of the biggest mm -hmm. names from the FPS world. Yeah, indeed, a massive congratulations to Team TP. Every single one of them more than qualified to be here and showing that even if you haven't spent a ton of time on the game, you can show us where that ceiling is, that level that we can play at. I had a ton of fun. Well, I, I say we, I mean them. I don't, I don't think I can <laughs> <laughs> play like that. But really, I think uh, a lot of fun to watch and shift, I think, leaves me wanting more. 
Oh, please and thank you. Come on. <laughs> I mean, we only got three matches. I kind of want like 30 of them, especially if they're going to end in 250, 249 barn burners. I mean, the, the future of, I think, competitive X Defiant has been set. In Vegas, there was a nice bar put, but this one really, I think, elevated to a different level. We got a taste of it there. When you go into something like this with, you know, storied FPS veterans, superstars, you know you're going to get good games. I didn't think we were going to get some <laughs> yeah. like incredible games like we got there. The ones that people tell stories about, the ones that echo through the halls of esports, you know what I mean? Some fantastic moments, and I, I can't wait to see what happens when we really hit the ground running with X-Define. The game is primed, it's ready for competition, and I cannot but just wait to see the very best start to rise to the top. I couldn't agree more, but unfortunately, that's going to be it for us here at the X Defiant All Stars Series. Thank you so much for joining us for an electric series of gameplay over multiple days. These players showcasing exactly what Uber said, the highest abilities and us asking for more. So we hope you enjoyed it, but I think now it's time for us all to go play some X Defiant. So thank you. We'll see you later. Let's go have some fun.